Okay, so what are both of our files doing here? Well, let's start off with the app.yaml file. The app.yaml file is kind of like a configuration file, which basically tells App Engine how our application should behave. Okay, so let's go over line by line and see what it's doing here. Application is basically saying our application identifier, which we will use so that the SDK knows where to deploy our application because we could open up, for example, two or three or, or how many applications we wanted on our console in, in on Google. And so when we deploy our code, the application ID will be used so that the SDK knows basically just where to deploy our application. Okay. The version is basically the, the version number for our application. And we will be using this in the future quite a bit. It's a really, really useful parameter. What we can do is when we deploy a version, well, let's say we go ahead and de deploy this application. It's on version one. Then the next time we make some changes, we can go ahead and bump up the version to version number two. Once both versions are deployed into production, we can actually go ahead and switch the traffic between one version and the other. So this is really handy because imagine you have made a big change and you upload your application into production and then you suddenly see in your logs that you are getting a lot of errors and your application is breaking somewhere due to a change you have introduced to your code. Well, what you can do is to go ahead and do a rollback of the version back to version number one without having to redeploy your application and figure out what changes you need to remove, so on and so forth, so you can act really quickly. Another thing you can do is also upload a new version, but instead of sending the entire traffic, so 100% of your traffic to the new version, you can send, for example, 10% of your traffic to the new version. And so what that allows you to do is to split your traffic and have a small portion of your traffic on your new version and see if there are any errors and see if your application is behaving correctly. So if you were to have in an error on your new version of your application, only 10% of the users could actually be affected. So 90% of your users will still receive a great experience while 10% will experience the error, but it's not as bad as having 100% of your users experiencing this error. So what would then happen is you would go and fix the error and redeploy your, your version number two of your application test it out again if you have fixed it. And once you've fixed it and you're confident enough, you can assign 100% of the traffic to your new version. So this is really, really handy. Runtime basically says which version of Python we're using. So this is Python 2.7. We're not going to be changing this. API version, again, we're not going to be using this an awful lot. Thread safe is also going to be yes all the time. And then here comes the interesting bit, handlers. This is going to be a very important topic and we will discuss this in much more detail in the next lecture. But to give you an overview, handlers is the section which defines which requests are processed by which scripts. So here we can see we are being, we are serving a static file to the request coming in favicon.ico. So whenever the browser requests are favicon.ico, we are going to be serving a static file. Now, all the other requests are going to be sent to the main.app and we will see in a second what main.app is. By the way, the period star is basically a regular expression which says period is any character. So it can be uppercase letters, lower, lowercase letters. It can be any number and it can be any symbol. And then the star indicates any amount of this character. So essentially it says anything, right? Anything coming in which is not for Vicon.ico will be mapped to main.app. Now, why anything except for Vicon.ico? Because whenever you receive a request, it checks from in order, right? From top to bottom. So if a Vicon.ico is being sent as a request, it will see, oh, it has matched here. So I'll just serve this static file. If this wasn't the case, it would go to the next line and evaluate if this matches the request that's being sent. And then in, in the case it would be matched, it would send the request to be handled by the main.app. Okay. And again, we will see main.app in just a second. 
but before we do libraries okay this is basically the section where we tell app engine which libraries we want to include into our project so in this case web app 2 is our framework for for handling requests so it's essentially our framework for building our web application okay okay so let's go into main.app and see what all of this is about if we hit command the command key or the control key in linux or, or windows you see it will start to get highlighted and if we click pycharm will take us to the main.app script okay so we're here right so this is the main.py file this is the second file and let's start off with this app variable okay this is a variable and to this variable we, we are assigning the web app to the whiskey application right whiskey application just in, in short is our entire application right and what we declare in our application is a router okay a router is basically a mapping of requests to request handlers okay so here we have the root request and we are saying that it must be handled by the main handler right so again our application is a router and the router maps all the different possible requests we want to handle and it maps those requests to request handlers okay a request handler is essentially as the name says a piece of code that handles the incoming request okay so let's go ahead and see what a how a request handler looks like well this here is a request handler so what do we have here class main handler the main handler is any name we want to give our request handler so we have called well pycharm has called this in this case main handler what is a class 